Merry Christmas. Thank you. On behalf of Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church, I welcome you and I trust that this time of stillness and space and candlelight and breath under the dance of the stars will bless you as you bring yourself into the celebration of Christmas. You are so welcome in this place. I want you to know that the words for the hymns are in your bulletin, but if you are a person who likes to read melody and harmony, those are listed also, the numbers are listed for the hymnal numbers. So I want all people to be happy. So uh, we're delighted that you are here. God bless us, everyone. Please stand, if you can, for the call to worship. Welcome to worship. Welcome to this time of naming our hunger, our hunger for hope and light. Like, like the, the long, long ago seekers, seekers who looked to the skies for signs, we, we have, have gathered, gathered tonight to listen, to listen for, for the, the song of the, the stars. stars. For unto us a child was born, a baby. The hope of the world was delivered to a world worn tired by fear. We, we have, have followed, followed our, our hearts to this place and this time. We seek to lay before Jesus and all children the gifts of our lives. We offer our compassion, our ability to seek and find holiness and our commitment to living peace on this earth. As we light the candles of hope, joy, love, and peace, we light the candle of Christ Jesus, born to bring us into life. Christ is born. We join our hearts to the song of the angels.
Let us join our hearts together and sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. seated. Let us pray. God, you shape our dreams as we gather together on this night. Give us hearts open to wonder, eyes able to behold your glory, and souls sustained by the power of hope. Unto us a child is given, day by day, year by year, moment by moment, we pray for an awareness of hope born anew. Amen. From the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, I read this Christmas text. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied exaltation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy, joy at the harvest. They rejoice as people exult when dividing plunder. 
For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there shall be endless peace. Peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. these words from Luke. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the word world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth 
and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. same region there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign unto you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heavens and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. So let us sing our joy. Will you rise as you are inclined or able? <laughs> And heaven, 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 and heaven,
Ben, you may be seated. For me, so much of Christmas is the telling of the miracle that we sing through carols and anthems. Angels and shepherds, friendly beasts and stars join in song because into the world is born the heart of God in flesh form. This ancient story told over thousands of years has moved hearts for thousands of years. And this story of the borning of Emmanuel, God with us, moves our hearts yet, maybe most especially this year. This year, the songs sung have a poignancy that pierces hearts because this thousands of years ago story is playing out today in Bethlehem, the place where hope was born into a world starving for hope. We sing, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie, knowing full well that Bethlehem on this night is a place where the birth story is not being celebrated by the throngs of the faithful. The Reverend Metro Mitri Raheb is a Palestinian Christian and he is the pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bethlehem. And he is the founder and the president of the Dayar Consortium, which is a group of Lutheran-based, ecumenically-oriented institutions serving in the Bethlehem area. In an interview with Democracy Now! Radio, Reverend Rahab speaks of the story that is unfolding right now in Bethlehem. He says this, the Christmas story is actually a Palestinian story par excellence. It talks about a family in Nazareth, which is in the north of Palestine, that is ordered by imperial decree of the Romans to evacuate to Bethlehem and to go there and to register. And he says, this is exactly what our people in Gaza have been experiencing over these days. The story, he says, talks about Mary, the pregnant woman on the run, exactly like the some 50,000 women in Gaza who are actually displaced. He goes on to say, Jesus was actually born as a refugee. There was no place for him to be born in the inn, so he was put into a manger, and he says this is exactly what children are coming to life, how they are coming to life these days in Gaza, because you know most of the hospitals are damaged. And you have this message, he goes on to say, that the angels declared here, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, which was actually a critique of empire because glory belongs to the Almighty and not to the mighty. And the peace that Jesus came to proclaim is not the peace of Pax Romana, the peace that is based on subjugation and military operation, but it is peace that is based on human dignity and equality and justice. And this is actually what we call for. I do not know how to stand in this pulpit on this night without naming the deep grief unfolding in Bethlehem and in Gaza, in Palestine, in Israel, in Ukraine, and in each of our beautiful hearts we hear the cry of thousands of voices that have been stilled. Throughout the season of Advent, we here at Hennepin have sought to quiet our anxieties and our griefs enough to listen for the song of the stars. 
the stars that lit the long ago Bethlehem night, announcing the birthplace of the Messiah, the one who came to teach us the ways of peace. The stars that dissolved race and caste and called the rich and the poor alike to the place where Jesus, impossibly vulnerable Jesus, lay. And that baby crying is just perfect on this night. Thank you. We listen yet, don't we? We listen for the song of the stars in the midst of the grief and the despair of these days, in the midst of the so much that we do not know and that we do not understand, the hunger for the light of hope in the manger lives in our hearts. Thousands of years after the birth of Jesus, we are desperate to welcome peace and we want to live peace. And we want the Herods of the world to stop summoning people to certain death. And we want children to be born into a world that makes room for all of them. Yes? Yes. I want to share with you a story that moves me every time I share it. It was written by Roger Robinault. And he talks about how he lived in northern Minnesota with his father who suffered with depression and how it is even in the midst of challenge, which is of course what we all live, light is real and hope in flesh-shaped form is real. This is his story and I'll share it in his voice. My father feared the darkness. His fear deepened in the gloom of December as Christmas, the time of light, drew near. As long as the kerosene lamps were ablaze from sundown until bedtime, he could endure the star-shot blackness that surrounded our tiny shack. In the Yuletide season, his spirits healed a bit as he watched the lamplight reflected on the Christmas tree decorations. The single 10 cent package of tinsel bought years before and carefully removed every year from each ensuing tree because there was no money to buy new. And the patches of sparkle on the 11 peeling red balls that had graced evergreens the 20 years of my parents' life together. When my father was at the height of his anger or the depths of his withdrawal, Gletha would appear, a pail of warm goat's milk in her hand. And in that goat's milk were secret additives disguised by a dash of caro syrup. And my father would swear at her and order her out of the house and forbid my ever moving through the woods with her again. However, her offerings occasionally shortened his time of darkness. And to this day, I wish I knew the healing herbal combination of her gifts. The Advent season when I was nine glows in my memory. 37 inches of snow had fallen in three weeks. Four days before Christmas, the wind-driven flakes began to fall again, and my father and I fought our way out to the barns to care for the cows and the sheep and the horses. And during a break in the storm, we watched a tragic wilderness ballet, a deer, floundering in the deep drifts, devoured by a pack of wolves. There was little to do during these blizzard-shrouded days. However, one pastime went on incessantly, rubbernecking. There were 18 families on our party telephone line. You heard about those in the movies? 
party telephone lines are right then. Each one had its own distinguishable ring. Our ring was affected by someone cranking out a short and a long and a short and a long. And when another family's ring was heard, everyone on the party line became adept at covering the mouthpiece with one hand while quietly easing the receiver off the hook with the other in order to listen in on the conversation. Well, my Aunt Floy was among the most persistent rubberneckers, and she had one handicap, a small dog named Yip, who tore loose with a horrendous cascade of barking at the slightest provocation. So as Floy listened, she'd forget to cover the mouthpiece, and Yip would sight an offending squirrel through the window and let out a torrent of noise, and one of the callers might shout, Floy, get off the phone. We want to talk about you. Well, the blizzard continued throughout Christmas Day, and each passing hour brought more concern to Mother and to me. We had used the last of our kerosene, and God only knew when we would be able to get to town to purchase more. And the candles, too, were gone. We faced the prospect of celebrating the Christ child's birth in a fear-filled darkness, fought by my father with occasional outbursts of expressed anger. As night erased the pines on the far edge of the clearing, my father and I came in from the barns. He had clung to my hand like a jittery child as we made our way through the thick falling snow. Entering the tiny kitchen, he opened the lid of the cast iron cook stove and the red glow from the coals reflected on the tears that were coursing down his face as he cried to my mother, Mary, can't you do something about the dark? My mother moved to the wall-mounted phone and she cranked out three shorts and a long and the booming voice of a mild, distant neighbor could be heard rolling through the receiver. And my mother pleaded with him, Ted, can you spare a little kerosene for tonight? We've got terrible sickness here. Frank is really down. We just can't spend a night with no light. Well, Mary, I've got a little extra, but it's still snowing to beat the devil, and there ain't no way I can get it to you unless the snow stops, and there's not much chance of that happening. Well, bye, Ted, and thanks anyhow. Don't let yourself get blowed away, and listen, you all have a Merry Christmas. My mother hung up the receiver and she paused for a moment, leaning wearily against the wall by the phone. Daddy had seated himself in his creaking rocking chair by the pot-bellied stove, clenching and unclenching his fists, and I stood by the window staring at the last ghosts of the blizzard-shattered light. And then I saw her, Gleetha, the goat lady, with her soft gray cloths floating behind her, she appeared to be riding the drifting snow, waving her arms in a slow cadence as though directing a symphony of the elements. The wind gentled and the falling snow lessened and through the clouds, burst the incredibly bright light of a full moon, starkly detailing every aspect of the Christmas Eve landscape. I blinked my eyes in disbelief, and Gletha was gone. Then they appeared, like fireflies in the distance. Some came from the north and some came from the south. Lanterns, 17 lanterns growing larger as their bearers came near. My father heard my gasp 
of amazement. He stumbled to the window and he shoved me aside and he said, Mary, my God, the lights, the lights. They came on that Christmas Eve, the light bearers. But they bore more than light. Though jobs were scarce and gardens had dried up and the snow was too deep for trap lines, everybody brought something to share. Tilly Maudlin had come with the makings of a mincemeat pie. Bill Cooley had some ground venison. Jip Matthews brought corn to pop. Thirty people or more crowded into our tiny living room and kitchen, and in their midst was Gletha, the goat lady, with her magic pail of milk and the secret powders and the dash of caro syrup. For those few moments on that magic evening, the fact that she was suspected of witchcraft and smelled pungently of goats, that was all forgotten. She suddenly lifted her hands and silence settled on the celebration. And she said quietly, I think there's good spirits aborn here. And she raised her rich voice in silent night and everyone joined in. And the child in the manger became as close as the snowbound sheep sheds 50 paces off. We sang and we laughed and we shared far into the night. Ted rolled in our kerosene barrel and everyone poured half a lantern full into it. We would not be without the light. As the crowd moved out to the front yard shouting Christmas greetings, Gletha's voice was joined by all in one last hymn, Amazing Grace. As folk, lanterns in hand, moved out across the moonlit snow, blessed on their way by the sung words of God's gifting. Their pattern assumed the shape of a gigantic moving star. And I knew that our Bethlehem had been visited by flesh-shaped hope. We are visited by flesh-shaped hope. We are flesh-shaped hope. You are here tonight because you felt a draw to be in a place where we remember that the heart of God became flesh and dwells in our midst. And God is not done with this earth or with us each. The vision of peace and healing is larger than any despot, than any war. For unto us a child has been given, and we are called to remember our story and live it with all of the courages that we have. We can illumine the places where hatred and fear crouch in our hearts, and in this God-beloved world. So I invite you to feel the people around you, to take in the dance of the star and the power of the light, and to step into hope, and to trust that together, there is a world that needs exactly what you have to share. Kerosene, dashes of caro syrup, your presence your heart. Amen. The gift of being in ministry is that we acknowledge that we need each other. And as one of the churches that serves in downtown Minneapolis, we are a part of a line, which is a group of 17 faith communities 
There are mosques, there are synagogues, there are churches, and together we pool our resources and we seek to reach into the places where people are feeling afraid and vulnerable. So everything you give on this night goes to a line. It doesn't go to Hennepin Avenue United Methodist Church. We are light in this place and in this community, and we are not alone. So let us enter into this time of offering. Somewhere, someone said, dedication is giving, is praying from the soul. There's so much soul here this evening. And so we give and we pray and we share and we commit our gifts to God's care, to the world's care care of creation. 
Hear this prayer from Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky has gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoners, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. Amen. Methodist tradition, the table is open to all people. You do not need to be a member of this church. You just have to be hungry for hope. We celebrate communion on this night because the Word became flesh, and because Christ Jesus became flesh, all flesh is holy. So we seek to provide nurture and nourishment. There is a gluten-free option for those who would prefer that. Um, we will give you a piece of bread and invite you to dip it into the cup. If you are uncomfortable with dipping into a common cup, there are individual cups here as well. So we, we don't want anything to hamper your coming forward. Also in the United Methodist tradition, we use grape juice rather than wine so that all people feel fully welcome to this feast. And so we pray together. God of star song and wonder, we join the shepherds who heard the invitation to witness miracle. We are here on this night to bring the gifts of our attention and our longing, and we offer them to you. You were born into a world unwilling to make room for you. In the vulner vulnerability of a child you made sacred forever, the wonder of flesh. So now, in gratitude, we join our voices with those of the ages, angels and shepherds, sheep and seekers, as we sing the song of our hearts. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of infants and sages, as we come to share the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. We cannot take bread and forget the cry of your earth that produced it. Lord, put our hearts to the care of creation. We cannot take the cup and forget those who are thirsty, the ground and the rootless, the earth and her people who cry for water and for justice. Lord, put our hearts to the service of creation. We cannot hear your words of peace and forget the world at war. Show us quickly, Lord, how to turn weapons into wealth of science and the thirst for power into a desire for peace. We cannot celebrate the feast of your grace and forget our divisions. We are one in spirit, but not in fact. Even, Even so, Jesus, quickly come. Be born in our hearts. Call us to be sheltered as we commit to the ways of peace. We remember together on the night in which Jesus sat at table with his friends for the last time. He took the gift of the bread and he gave thanks to you, gracious God. And he broke the bread and he shared it with his disciples and he said, take and eat all of you. This is my body, it is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And we likewise remember that Jesus took the gift of the cup and he gave thanks to you 
and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you. It is a sign of the new covenant I am making with you through my blood, through the water, through the spirit, through my heart. Each time you share this gift, do so in remembrance of me. So together, we name the presence and the power of Jesus as we name the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the lifeblood of Jesus, that we might be a people who live the power and promise of Emmanuel, God with us. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Give us the wisdom to follow the star to the place where Jesus is found, which is everywhere and in all places. Amen. Amen. So there will be two different stations of people who will be offering the bread and the cup. Please come, let yourselves be fed.
Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to taste and see how very good you are. And we ask for the awareness that you have given us this life in order to bear witness to light and to love and compassion and to grace in the way taught to us by Jesus. So thank you. Thank you for the gift of this meal, for the gift of this time, and for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, born anew moment by moment. Amen. So we will together share the light of Christ, and I will invite you um, to rise as you are able or inclined, and we will share the light one with the other. I would ask that you take your unlit candle and turn it into the person who has a lit candle next to you. Um, we will pass the light down the aisles uh, and sing this holy song.
invite you to look around you. And when you feel small and alone and frightened and unsure, remember that for unto us a child was born, the miracle of God's heart is alive in this world, and you, you are the light of Christ. Go from this place giving thanks for the wondrous gift and your part in it. May God be with you. Amen.